My dearest friends, the most amazing concept came to me today. Now, why is that amazing? We all have concepts, but if I may say, I'm just using this to bring out the point. I have written over 80,000 blogs. I've written and translated probably 20, I don't know exactly how many, to 30 books and booklets and stuff like that. So... Sometimes God, in his great kindness, and a friend of mine, Pinka Silverman, an amazing genius, almost prophet, said sometimes God gives you an overarching idea. It's like, wow, you get the whole picture. Now, please listen carefully to this concept. See if it resonates. See if you agree with it. Because if it does, this, I believe, is everything. It's what we shouldn't do. And it's what we should do. And it applies to all of us. And it's so insidious that many people don't realize that they're doing it and they're becoming evil because of it. Myself included, I'm guilty that I have. This was just a wake-up call to me. And I hope and I pray you will forward this video if it resonates in your heart to others, to your entire social network. Because the bottom line is this. We may never condemn. We must always inspire. The most famous story, if you want to call it, in fact, this is brought down in Christianity. <clears throat> it's called, I think it's called the Golden Rule. It's brought down in Islam. And it's, I believe, originates in Judaism. It's a story where a Gentile came to Hillel. And he said to him, Rabbi, I want you to teach me all of Judaism while I stand on one foot. And the great master, Hillel, who was known for his tremendous patience, said, that which you don't want another to do to you, don't do to them. That's the entire Judaism. The rest is the explanation of those kind of ramifications, the details of that. So a simple question is, why didn't he say the opposite? That which you want someone to do to you, you want someone to be nice, you want someone to... I don't know, give you charity if you need. But Hillel understood the essence of reality. You see, if God wanted us to have, if it's a question of lacking or not, can make us every antas, every bird, every amoeba, they all have what they want. That's not the issue here. The issue here is don't condemn another person. Even if you did something wrong, would you want someone to condemn particularly in public, what is going on, certainly in the media, the condemnation, the shaming, the humiliating, it is the worst form of abuse. And if you have an internet site and you humiliate someone, it's complete evil. Why? Because the, at least in the olden days, you said it and it was gone. But now every single moment, he has to think that the guy that this article is printed. I know a Jewish lady who is a journalist, and she got out of journalism when she learned the laws of not speaking evil about another person. It's, it's, it's like cannibalism, but it's worse because the poor guy's alive to see his shame on a daily basis. So, my prayer is that this very moment, we are all inspired to understand our mission in this world is to inspire one another. Sheer solutions. I remember I came out once with a 10-point plan to save civilization. Personally, it was a great thing. I sent it to one of the previous presidents. Many of the ideas were incorporated. But the bottom line is, when I initially made the plan, I sent it to a bright guy. I wanted some feedback. He said to me, don't focus on the problems. Focus on the solutions. So my friends, when I am, God forbid, condemning you focusing on the problems, there's a part of me that's doing that just to be cruel. I don't want to go into all the psychology, we've spoken about it, but there's no question that if I do something to you that I don't want you to do to me, that's evil. But on the flip side, would I like you to inspire me? Would I like you to teach me something that will make my life better? A hundred percent. So this teaching itself, Never condemn, always inspire, share it, move it forward, because this is the golden rule that all religions believe in, but it's so kind of 
so simple to think, oh, I'm better than them. That's why I'm condemning them. They're evil. That's why I'm condemning them. No, you are jealous of them. And the evil you see in them is actually within you. It's a mirror image. This is the whole point of basically Jung, who was one of the greatest psychologists. We can only see the evil in another that we see in ourselves. It's just self. We deny it to our own conscious mind. And the other, we see it. So those that are condemning, they are condemning not because they're righteous. And people make this mistake. People thought, oh, Hitler was a righteous guy. He's condemning the Jews because he's righteous. Turns out the guy's just a sadistic murderer. But it's easy to think that the guy's so kind of righteous. That's why he's condemning. And these black radicals that are condemning, obviously, you could say the same thing about white supremacists, but I don't see many white supremacists in our country. But I do see a lot of this black radicalism. If you want to build a country, Martin Luther King was not against white people. He was against one nation for all people. Nelson Mandela was not against white people. He was against unity of all people. So I want you to distinguish those that want the world to be a good place. They respect all people. They respect themselves first and foremost. And those that have suffered the shame and humiliation, they begin to see what shameful and humiliate, basically good excuses to humiliate others so they don't, they're not the only ones that feel this. And unfortunately, the Arabs, this guy who was a former Arab terrorist, he wrote two books, Once an Arafat Mind and that Mind, sorry, Once an Arafat Man in the Mind of Terror. He told me very clearly something that I thought, but he confirmed it. He has a PhD on this, that all of this Arab hate towards the Jews, which the Russians, the previous communists, they kind of tried to spread this through called disinformation, the whole idea of the Palestinian people and all this, they're just the Arabs. <laughs> and the Arabs have been trying to kill Jews for thousands of years. Why? Because they suffer from a jealousy. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I'm just saying that there's a jealousy. In fact, I made a video with him. You can look Google or something, try to find it, whereby I said I apologize for anything the Jews ever did to the Arabs. Not that I think we ever did anything. But the point is I wanted to make him feel better. And he apologized for what they did to us. So the point is, you have to make the other person feel le feel good, basically. There was once a guy, as a Muslim, he wasn't an Arab, I was in this kind of marketplace. And, you know, first there was some Muslims that came over that were interested, very nice people, we were schmoozing. But this guy could see that he was just being antagonistic. So there's no point in arguing with somebody that just wants to argue. So I wanted to finish the conversation. So I said to him, tell me, do you love me or you hate me? So he couldn't say he loves me, couldn't say he hates me. So he says, you know the Palestinians. So I said, I just want you to know that I love you. He put his head down and he walked away. You see, behind all hate is jealousy of love. That's all it is. And so we have to understand that none of us, we're all the same. The psychological factors affect us all equally. If you are seeing what is wrong in someone else, it means that there is a self-esteem issue in you and you're projecting it on the other. And so therefore, let us truly integrate this idea. We are all here to inspire one another, not to condemn. And therefore, we have to look at the most inspirational leaders, people like the Lubavitcher Rebbe, the great people that they were here to inspire and they were inclusive. Everybody in this world had a wonderful place in the world because we all matter. We're all God's children. We're all endowed with unique and complementary talents. And when we understand this, we understand we're all part of a symphony of a beautiful garden where all the flowers in that garden and each one of us, whether you're a rose or even a dandelion, whatever you are, we all add to the beauty and we all add to the majesty. And we all add to the greatness and let us embrace this universal concept that we're all on a mission. We all have a mission. We're all important to the mission. And with the help of God, the Mashiach, the Messiah will soon come. He'll give us all our direct mission and we'll all literally live with inspiring, not in a negative way, in a positive way, happily ever after.